Morning, Shane. Thanks very much for joining us at Blue Notes on the morning of the December quarter trading update. Uh, front and centre here was discussion about the currency. ANZ, with its international business, is a bit more exposed to currency fluctuations than Australian peers. Can you walk us through the moving parts of that? Sure. When, when shareholders buy ANZ, you get an exposure to the region. We think that's a good thing. We think that's ultimately a good thing in the long term. Uh, but what it has is in the shorter term, it does tend to introduce a little bit of fluctuation in some of the numbers. And, and the impacts of the lower Australian dollar are many and varied. And so it's a good thing in terms of earnings because those earnings base that we have in Asia, which is a, a very and growingly important part of our business, get um, inflated because of the lower Australian dollar. And then it can have some um, kind of more negative impacts on things like uh, our capital levels. So it's a, it's a rel relatively complex uh, set of variables, but ultimately we think it's a good thing for shareholders. And then when you look at the targets the bank has set, does it play into those targets going forward? Sure, when we set those targets, the world looked uh, quite a bit different. The Australian dollar was essentially at parity with uh, the US dollar and that's no longer the case. So it does make some of those targets a little bit more difficult, like the ROE one, for example, but we're still committed to those things. But it does change the a kind of short-term ability to de deliver some of those targets. And looking at some of the components, um, perhaps start with one that was a bit more, um, not confusing, but you talked about a mixed result at IIB. What was mixed about that Asian and international business, the institutional business? Sure. Well, the customer franchise, so just dealing with our customers day in, day out, in terms of the volumes that we're doing for them, the things that they're asking us to do, the number of countries we're working in, all of those things improved and continue to improve pretty strongly. So we're, we're pleased with the kind of the, the strength of the customer franchise that we're building. However, some of those impacts, and it's largely as a result of a lot of the central bank actions that we see around the world, mean that interest rates continue to, to, to fall and be extremely low. I mean, it's interesting to note, one of our guys was talking about the other day, that I think now a third of all the government bonds on issue in Europe are actually negative interest rates. Those things actually have an impact on, on our business in terms of our ability to generate revenue. Another one that maybe people hadn't thought through in terms of the market was that um, clearly with commodity prices down pretty substantially, I mean we're talking you know, 50, 60 and 70 percent in some cases, that means a shipment of iron ore or coal or the things that we finance while, while the ship hasn't changed size, the value of what's on that ship has changed. And that means our ability to generate revenue from those has also changed. And that, that was a, why it was a bit of a mixed bag um, in the business there. Australia and New Zealand, on the other hand, looked quite strong. And indeed, um, if you could talk through a bit of the strength there and whether that's sustainable, but also it makes people say, well, why aren't you all in Australia and New Zealand rather right. than uh, international. Now both businesses had, had a really good start to the year in fact and that's really continuing on a trend we've seen for some time. Um, here in Australia the business just goes from strength to strength you know we've had essentially five years of just grinding out higher and higher market share through better product innovation and better services to our customers so that continues to do well. In fact if you lined up our Australian business whether it's retail or the small business commercial banking against our peer group it's pretty clear you know, we kept pace or, bet or beat most of our competitors on a line-for-line -line basis. The reality is, though, that's a relatively smaller part of our business as it is um, for, than for some of our peers where it's essentially 100% of what they do. And there's no doubt that if you look back over the last two or three years, the best place to be in banking globally has essentially been in Australian domestic banking. Um, the New Zealand business just continually uh, improving as well, although slightly different uh, reasons and drivers there. We're the largest bank in New Zealand, New Zealand economy is doing very well and we're really getting the benefits from our brand merger and the simplification process that we've got there. So both franchises frankly in really terrific shape and that is absolutely sustainable uh, we see for the not just the medium term but for the long term. And that international mix of ANZ's business also plays into capital demand, the capital intensity of the business. People rightly are very concerned about capital generation these days. What's the outlook you know, from this statement and forward? You know, capital generation absolutely really important in any time in a, in a bank's um, uh, position. But as of today with a lot of regulatory uh, change that we've already experienced and more to come, that's given even greater focus. ANZ, we, you know, we, we generate good levels of organic capital. Um, we are a growing business though, and that growth opportunity that we have, that option that we have, needs to be invested in. And so at the same time we're generating lots of capital from a lot of our kind of home businesses, we want to invest that capital to build growth and return for the long term. And a lot of that, not all of it, but a lot of that is in places like uh, Asia. Our job in senior management is to make sure that we get that balance right. So we're generating more than enough organic capital, 
not only to give some of that back to shareholders in the form of dividends, and, and but also to be able to seed and invest in long-term growth for our franchise. And we're, you know, we're confident we can get that balance right. And just finally, there's also a statement on credit quality that gets released today. Are there any signs that that benign credit quality cycle is turning? Not, not really. I mean, if you looked at our, uh, our numbers and the disclosures, it's essentially said they're more or less um, on trend with what we saw last year. So while there'll always be pluses and minuses, we haven't really seen any uh, early signs of that trend uh, uh, changing. And I think that makes sense. You know, the economy here is, is slowing. Um, interest rates are low. Uh, those things are generally reasonably accommodating for uh, the credit cycle. You know, we're not getting into the kind of heady days where people are over borrowing or over leveraging, et cetera. So it's, 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 it's a good place for bank credit quality. And, you know, we're, we see the benefits of that for some time to come. Thanks again for your time speaking with Blue Note, Shane. Okay, thank you.